a year or two before grad school, but uh, yeah, I grad school that. in environmental microbiology and deep sea microbiology, definitely. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I feel that. I definitely took two years after undergrad, so I studied marine science and biology. When I first got into undergrad, I went to the University of Miami, Rosenstiel School of Atmospheric Science, Marine and Atmospheric Science, shout out, go Canes. Um, <laughs> and then halfway through, I switched to marine affairs and policy and then minored in marine, bio my marine biology and environmental science. And um, ended up liking that because it sort of gave me that human dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. of the science and sort of uh, help me really figure out how we're trying to ease the tension sort of between society and the marine environment and I thought that was cool. That is and so yeah and then when I got in grad school that's when I sort of got into more of the strategic environmental communication side of things um, and then stumbled upon this fellowship and so here I am. Can you tell people what your fellowship is? Yes, it is a science communication fellowship with Ocean Exploration Trust. So in addition to what Annabelle is doing, so Annabelle is an uh, ocean science intern. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other internships like ROV piloting and video engineering and mapping. Um, and those usually are geared towards undergrads. Um, if you are interested in the science communication fellowship, um, that's usually geared towards more graduate students or professionals that are in the field. You get an opportunity to come on board the Nautilus um, and work in the role that I am doing now. So yeah, many ways to get involved. Wow. That is also um, not something I knew was available to me when I went through college. Mm. Science communication, it's fascinating. I know. Yes, we, somebody's asking that we're with the 4 to 8 team. Yes, this is the 4 to 8 watch. Uh, we got a bit of a delayed start. I think Diane was explaining. We were trying to wait on the weather a bit, um, asking when do we work, sleep, eat, etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> when well, we sleep we when can. we can. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we eat a lot, we sleep when we can, and we hope to dive as much as possible. Exactly, exactly. So that means that we um, are on watch because when we are diving, a lot of the times they are uh, very long watches, sometimes 12 hours. This one's going to be 16 hours. And the ROVs do not sleep, which means somebody always has to be up and around. So our watch is from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, and then 4 to 8 a.m. So we get up pretty early to do that particular watch. And um, our meals are pretty standard. Breakfast is from 7.30 yeah. to 8.30. Thank you, because I keep thinking 7 <laughs> o'clock. Uh, 7.30 to 8.30. Lunch is from 11. 12? 11 11 30. Thank you. <laughs> this means that I sleep through meals a lot, guys. That's what this is. That's what you're hearing right now. Um, and then dinner is from five to six. Mm -hmm. And yeah, everybody doesn't always eat every meal because depending on when your watch is, you're trying to get rest. Does anybody sleep through a particular meal? I know I feel like I always sleep through lunch personally. Uh, I think I've been getting all my meals plus something. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, good. I've been doing well on that front. On the 12 to 4 watch, you got to sleep through breakfast. Yeah. Yep. That is true. Oh, is that what happens? Yeah. When but you go I to bed at 4 a.m. That's true. Breakfast is my favorite. <laughs> All the breakfast foods. Mm. But then lunch just becomes your breakfast. Mm. Yeah, but what about like eggs and omelets and the pancakes? And <laughs> it's in the fridge. You then eat your table. Steve is like, warm it up. <laughs> they, do, they do a great job here in the galley. Um, and they do feed us very well, and they do keep a lot of uh, leftovers so that people on watch um, can have a snack, can get what they need. So yes, there are lunches and things that are saved in case in case you miss one. Oh, somebody said they found us because on Netflix, the story of Robert Ballard, he talks about his website, and that's how they found it. Cool. Ah, okay. Interesting. I didn't know he had a, a, a thing on Netflix. That's awesome. I'm about to watch that. We got a net, lot of Netflix watching to get to when we get on shore. Oh, yes. I'm a film and TV fanatic, so I know I have a lot of catching up to do. Do you have a long flight home? 
I do. I do too. I do <laughs> indeed. I'm catch up on and everything. <laughs> very long flight home. Yeah, so many of us who live over on the East Coast, mm -hmm. some red eye flights on the way back, do some good movie watching. Yep. Maybe read. A lot of other people saying they found it through YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we thinking for a for a team name for a watch name? I think if we see sea stars, then it it needs to be something related to sea stars. It might be fate if we see it. Well, I mean, I'm sure we we probably will. But Although we don't actually have that many that much time on our watch. That's true. I really liked Paragorgias. Mm, I thought it was clever. Paragorgias. I thought it was clever. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing is stuck so far. Maybe maybe we'll cement something today. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe I'll do Some another sh things. shout out later. See yeah. what other options we get. <laughs> Someone's asking how deep this dive will be. The expected depth is 2,500 meters today. So. Got a little while to go. Just a little bit. <laughs> We're only at what, 266? <laughs> 266 meters. So. We're a tenth of the way there. That's progress, you know, I'll take it. We're a tenth of the way there. <laughs> Glass half empty, half full. Right. You know. Ooh, what's that in the water? Huh, look at that. All kinds of floaty things. The marine snow is always a little mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when it like moves its direction I across know. the screen. people watching from today? Oh, Let's that's a good see. question. I'm always so interested. <laughs> I know. Where? Oh, where? Mm. Of course, we have the U.S. representing always. Um, lots of that. Uh, Canada, Australia, Finland. Ooh, nice. Finland, which is on my bucket list of places to go, Ooh, by the way. Yeah. What time zone is it right now in Finland? I don't even know. I'd have to look that They're up. They're 12 hours ahead. They're 12. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Beth. Um, let's see who else we got here. New Zealand and the Netherlands so far. Wow. Yep. Some dedicated folks. I mean, 12 hours ahead. I bet they want to see some emojis. <laughs> I bet they do. Yes, put things in the water column for us, Beth. <laughs> Just gonna bleed them in every now and yes. then. Yes, <laughs> we need some life in the water column. <laughs> I love that they don't these go don't away. disappear anymore. <laughs> you can just really have the octopus forever. <laughs> that was one of the new finds. But Telestrator animal. So what do we think? Are we going to make it to bottom before we have to hand off to the uh, next I watch? I hope so. Oh. Uh, it, I hope so. Are we taking guesses? Uh. I'm going to say no. Oh. oh. Break my well. heart a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> then we can be pleasantly surprised if I'm okay, wrong. Okay, okay, okay. 2,500 meters, is that right? How yep, deep we're yeah, going? Yep, that's right. 
We de what are we descending at? 20, 25 meters a minute? Trying to find that stat here. Right here. So yeah, it's oh, stat. yeah, it's about 23. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Y'all yeah. do the math. <laughs> Ugh. We got like a, a lot of minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll just see, like, just like start to see the bottom. Minutes. And then we'll have to leave. <laughs> 100 minutes. 100 minutes, that's a bit much. <laughs> oh, we might just barely make it yeah. to the floor. <laughs> uh-huh. It's all right. Other shift. We, this is our first blue water shift. It is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and we'll be back here in 12 hours. That's true. We'll be back here in the middle of the night. So that's and we'll true. have another blue water shift somewhere. Uh, well, we'll, get, we'll okay. get the very end of the dive. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. We'll, get, we'll okay. get the summit. Oh. Hmm. Someone's wondering what's the coolest thing we've seen so far. I'm still stuck on the bubblegum coral with all of I was about to say that. This is the coolest thing. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> the blue one. <laughs> World's tiniest blue whale. <laughs> um, yeah, Shelby, I have to go with that answer too. That bubblegum coral with the basket stars, yeah. the snake star, yeah, the fish wild. being predated by the stars. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it was so amazing. It was huge. Yeah, it was huge and colorful. It was bright pink and yellow and a little dark fish. And I know. <laughs> what did we estimate? Like over a meter. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit. That this sort of rings a bell. But yeah, it was beautiful, stunning. Oh, hopefully that The picture. comb jelly was pretty too. Yeah. Mm. I really liked it. Mm. That was cool. Hopefully those pictures will be Yeah, around soon. soon. I'm sure the folks on shore will work on it. What about our little chana cops yesterday? The two little mm. chana cops? <laughs> They're pretty good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Red is our shift was ending. Yeah. It was even facing us. Yeah. I think it might have been one Charnikov that swam around to get <laughs> and then face us. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We'll take it. You saying everybody likes the spotlight sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> For any of our new audience, Stephen, can you pull up the Chief's Eye um, computer monitor? Sure, give so me about one minute for that. Got some pictures. Oh, I think actually. Oh, fantastic. Uh, science, I think I'm in the Chief Science seat. This is Chief's Eye hard drive. Okay. I don't know what your oh, computer mind. is Sorry. called. We can see, if you look at the desktop, you can see. Um, there it is on channel three. Yeah, right. So this is the for our new folks who heard us talking about the things we saw on our last dive, but maybe don't know what we're talking about. This is one of those, Chana Cops. It's an angler fish um, with a nice pouty face. Um, that was something we saw at the very <laughs> end of our dive. These images are put together um, on the oceanexplorer.noaa.gov webpage. One of the data products on that page is a benthic animal guide. Um, and so representative images of some of these deep sea animals that we've seen on our expedition and on other expeditions in this area by Nautilus, by uh, the Schmidt Ocean Institute's Falcor, by Okeanos Explorer, um, are all aggregated together on oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. So you can flip through those. Um, we've pulled out that archive on our ship's computer, so we don't have to necessarily get on the internet. Um, but yeah, Chana Cops is a cute one. It's uh, oh, so cute. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. almost looks like a little balloon. Mm -hmm. Or kind of like one of these. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that one actually disappeared on its own. Huh. I guess there must be a setting. 
Off to, oh, I'm just gonna keep playing around with this. Octopus. Edit. Oh, someone's asking if there's a microphone on Hercules, and I learned that that is a no because Hercules is very loud, and we wouldn't really be able to hear any cool marine sounds. But there are people who do collect <laughs> sounds in the water column and beyond, but not on Hercules. If you're watching Satellite Feed 1, you can get entertained by Hercules' arm moving in a bunch of different directions. <laughs> yeah, we have some training going some on. Some training the front going row. on the yep. front. Oh. <laughs> training with an octopus. <laughs> Just testing if I'm getting the settings correctly. <laughs> Are there other expeditions that can be followed online? If you're talking about Ocean Exploration Trust expeditions, that answer is absolutely. You can follow every single expedition that Ocean Exploration Trust does on EV Nautilus. Um, you can just go to nautiluslive.org and whatever current expedition is underway will sort of be on that home page and you can put questions down on the bottom if the answer question answers button is toggled green then you can submit questions. Um, I'm not sure about other organizations. I'll hop in on that one, Shelby. Great, because I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, there's kind of three flagship uh, telepresence broadcasters uh, uh, that when they're in the water are often live streaming their dives. Uh, so Nautilus and Ocean Exploration Trust is one of them. The Okeanos Explorer, which is a NOAA vessel, um, and they're getting ready to start some expeditions through the summer, but I don't think they're broadcasting right now. I think they're in Puerto Rico yeah. currently. Okay. Well, at least one is in Puerto Rico, but I don't know if they're broadcasting it. Yeah, and then the Schmidt Ocean Institute is um, another uh, regular telepresence broadcaster, but they're in the middle of transitioning uh, ships, Oh. Um, so they probably won't be broadcasting for another year while okay. they're moving all their systems over. Nice. Um, but you can find all of these uh, uh, through an aggregated program that they all contribute to called deepoceaneducation.org, which I think is the right web page. I'm trying to open it up here. Um, where uh, Nautilus, Falcor, Oceanus Explorer, they all uh, have really great highlights of cool things they've seen on the seafloor. It's designed so that educators can use them in a classroom or groups can use them, but they also have a link where you can see, you know, live feeds coming in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, there it is. Deep Ocean Education. Oh, yes. I remember when this launched. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and so on that, you can see both find all these resources, really cool videos, um, as well as uh, find live feeds. That'd be cool. So do you right want to put that, that up? Sure, Stephen, uh, again, if you could put up Chief Sai sure. on channel three, um, so you can see there uh, what the website looks like. Um, and so maybe right this moment, we might be the only ones broadcasting. Additional programs that you uh, could check out um, that aren't necessarily through deep ocean education, but other places, um, interactive oceans, is a telepresence feed uh, operated through the University of Washington and their Ocean Observatory Initiative node, let's say. Uh, they run a, 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 the regional cabled array on the US West Coast, off the coast of Oregon. Uh, and they're often broadcasting expeditions, especially in the summertime, when oh, that's cool. they are uh, doing a lot of maintenance work on the observatory, which is where you can find some of those hydrophones to listen to the deep sea. Um, and also, uh, Ocean Networks Canada uh, also has a cabled array 
several cabled array observatories um, in nice. the northwestern Pacific and Sandwich Inlet and other places around Canada. Um, and often when they're doing expeditions, they also are broadcasting live. Nice. And they have live cameras on the seafloor. So they have some crawlers called, I think one of them's called Wally, <laughs> that is just nice. on the seafloor crawling around, uh, you know, oh, just like kind of checking autonomous? Out. Just uh, like, or is it controlled? I, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. Um, we can maybe look that up. But yeah, so you, you can just tune in to that that's feed awesome. and see that. So those are some great options um, if you just can't get enough deep sea footage. <laughs> and then, of course, a lot of these dives are all on YouTube. Yep, that's right. Um, thanks, Stephen. You can put up whatever you like on Channel 3. Man, I got to look up that crawler. That's how I got to figure that out now. Yeah, you're right, Beth. Wally the benthic crawler. <laughs> I think we're all looking at it at the moment. Like, what? Always learning about new stuff. I know. Yeah, I, I believe that instrument is a collaboration between Ocean Networks Canada and some scientists and engineers from Germany mm. um, who have a, a been leading research in that area for quite a while. But yeah, so both um, interactive oceans, the regional cabled array uh, off of Oregon, and Ocean Networks Canada's um, observatories have lots of deep sea instruments that are out and broadcasting data real time, all the time. Um, so, uh, and some of them, you know, it's not just imagery, they also have data coming off, uh, hydrophone data, pressure data, temperature data, mm. things like that. Um, uh, one of the fun things, uh, you know, whenever there's any kind of seismic activity around the world, mm -hmm. uh, many of these observatories can hear that or feel that with their seismometers and other tools. Um, and those are actually uh, great warning devices, um, especially for, um, uh, for the ca Canadian observatories. That's part of their kind of tsunami alert system. And when they can detect that sound and use that to model or help evaluate the models of whether or not they should expect waves mm. on the Canadian coastlines. Wow. Awesome. Uh, yeah, somebody missed the information about tonight's, tonight's expedition. Repeat the depth. Yes, 2,500 meters is the expected depth tonight. That's our starting point, right? And then we move up and along the ridge a bit. Correct. Um, yes. Kind of slowly this evening, but going up about 250 meters. Is that correct as well? Mm, I haven't seen the dive plan. Most recently, originally it was about 350. It might be about 250 now. It's okay. Uh, dive plan says ascent yep. 2150 meters at 15 meters a minute. Is that what we're looking for? Uh, no, that's when we're recovering oh. the vehicles. Um, so in the paragraph right above that, it'll say where we'll start here, we'll transit about two kilometers. Ah, 350, there we go. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I only know that because I had to write it. <laughs> <laughs> Now I know where to look for it too. Yep. Super helpful. Uh, front row, I don't know if you're on SBL and Hello. have a minute for one question. Sure. Somebody's just wondering sort of what the basics of the arm and how the arm works on Hercules. Uh, it's hydraulic, which means it's high pressure oil that moves all of the joints. And we control it using a smaller version of itself up here in the control van. So the remote control down subsea is a large, strong manipulator. 
And the one up here is, I don't know, about not even a foot tall. Cool. How many, like, joints does the Ooh, arm, that's and, and what directions do they move in? Yeah, both arms have the same number. Contrary to popular belief, <laughs> uh, they are called seven function manipulators because there are seven uh, functions. Uh, <laughs> so the first one is shoulder azimuth. That's the whole arm spins left and right. Uh, you can see that when we go reach around to the starboard side or put stuff in the forward box. It's like that. Then shoulder elevation is the next one. That's where the big main part of the arm booms up and down. The next one is elbow. That's where the forearm moves up and down, similar to your own hand. And we got all so the, the remaining four are all in the wrist. So we have wrist left, right, wrist up, down, also called rich wrist pitch and wrist yaw. We have wrist rotate, which is where the whole jaws or fingers, I guess they're really fingers, we call them jaws. Anyway, it's where they spin around. They can go full 360 degrees and more. And then of course the seventh function is grab. So open and close of the jaws. So it's exactly the same, in fact, with the port manipulator. Same same functions. Awesome. The difference between the two is the starboard one. We can move all seven at the same time at any speed we want, whereas the port one, it only goes one speed and only one joint at a time. Mm. Nice follow-up question, Annabelle. Is seven kind of the gold standard, or are there manipulator arms with even more functions? I have never heard of one with more. I haven't either. Except, well, okay, you know, I'm going to flip that on its head. Uh, we often do gas tight samples, which yes. means we put a little uh, isobaric chamber, whatever, and take a gas sample of undersea venting, etc. And uh, we do that to. I don't know, do science on the gas. We'll talk about that after. But the way we trigger that <laughs> is we have what we call, colloquially, colloquially here, we call it a tom thumb. And that's an eighth hydraulic function that we run out. We run hoses along the arm, and we have a little ram cylinder mounts to the end of the arm, and it triggers the gas tight. So that would, I guess, technically count as an eighth function. All right, yeah. Huh? Ramrod. Mm, cool. <coughs> We both forgot to slow down on that transition. Yeah, we did. Sorry about that. Yeah, me too. Oh. That's too fast. Oh, friend. <laughs> it's hard to lock it in at 30. It is very hard, yeah. And I'm watching you. Yeah, don't watch me. OK, I won't watch you. <laughs> That's my vertical velocity. Yeah, I was trying to match it. No, I thought I we were racing. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> we're I not will racing to the bottom? No, I'll win on the way to the bottom. <laughs> You'll win on the way up. All right. You're setting the speed and I'm going to match your delta. Okay. Whereas on the way up, I'll set the speed and you'll match my delta. I am locked in at 30, 31, okay. 30 and a half. Someone's wondering what's the longest expedition you've ever been on. This is the longest one I've ever been on. Has anybody ever passed the three and a half week mark? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Beth, how many expeditions have you done? <laughs> Well, are we talking length of a single expedition? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely longer than this. Yes. <laughs> What's your longest one, Trevor? <laughs> I think my longest one was, I don't know, probably six or seven weeks. Oh, okay. I'm my assuming goodness. no port Gosh. calls, but like if we count port calls as, uh, what am I trying to say? If we count port calls, but then going out again as longer, then well into two months. Well, or sorry, well into three months. All right. Wow. Wow. What area were you in? Uh, for which one? Oh, oh gosh, multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> so the one that was, I think I did 60 something days, I don't remember, but that was with a port call. That was Samoa to San Francisco via Hawaii. Wow. Wow. Um, the six week one, I don't even remember. <laughs> it's been several times. Diane, what's the longest you've been on a cruise for? Uh, she cut us all beat, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> I'm with Trevor, though. Like, if port calls count or not, um, the longest one I've been on the ship was four months. So, with port calls or without? We weren't allowed off the ship. It was during yeah, right. COVID. So, 
I feel like technically, like we that could have been anywhere yeah. in the world. <laughs> we could have been way out at sea when we got back to port, but essentially it was two expeditions and yeah. I was on for the back to back. So. Wow. Well, yeah, I'd say that counts. <laughs> that if you can't get off the ship. Yep, no. that counts. Yeah, that counts. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> hey, Ashton, is porch light on? Let me see. No. No? Okay. You can check, but. Do you want it on? I'm just, I see a little flare in the camera. Uh, I'm just wondering if we could do a little tilt to lose it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. How many pieces of flare? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 13. Well, it depends if you want to just have the bare minimum, Trevor. <laughs> Is Hercules fully unmanned? Yes. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> uncrewed. Can a, can a pilot uncrewed? uncrewed? We it sent down three quarters of an intern. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. You don't know about that yet. I have a friend to tell you that. Oh, great. <laughs> you, Bobby, Bobby Argus. <laughs> Bobby Argus. <laughs> it's unmanned, but slightly womaned. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, somebody said that Kraft has made a nine-function manipulator used by the offshore oil, offshore oil industry, apparently. So okay, then. Hmm. I guess we... I, I <laughs> shed doubt on that. <laughs> yeah, what, what do they have? Maybe, like, two elbows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are their direction, like, in terms of function? Like, how would that help you? Unless it was proprietary, but I've... Never heard of a craft nine function. Maybe it has like a like a special tool on it or something, like a yeah special kind of claw or saw does, or does blade. Does function typically course mean uh, a joint? Yeah, yeah. You can look at some of the images and see. I mean, the grab the grabbers are a, a function. And I would say that it has to be mounted to the arm to count as a function. Even the Tom Thumb is pushing it. When you mount the oh, Tom Thumb, do you, uh, is it controlled with the same controller? It is not. It's okay. a button on the GUI. So that's why it's kind of a stretch. Mm. So it looks like the difference is that the forearm can rotate. So you found a Kraft 9 function? No. I think it's just sure. saying seven still. I one, two, three, one, two, four, three. five, six. If it helps, we're the craft predator. Yeah, there's a craft predator, which is a seven. There's a craft raptor, which is also a seven, I think. It is a seven. Yep. And there's a, do they have a five as well? I think they have a five. I can't remember. I know Schilling makes a bunch of sevens and fives. They have many of each type. We'll just have to assume that functions eight and nine are <laughs> secret. <laughs> Top secret. Yeah. Maybe it's a little pew pew. <laughs> right. Like a spider web, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a mini blowout preventer, maybe. But if the viewer at home that has commented that can prove me wrong, I'm excited to learn about it. <laughs> Guess what? We're still talking about Hercules. People are wondering uh, sort of what the ascent looks like. Specifically says, how does Hercules go back up? Uh, with thrusters, the vertical thrusters, same ones that are pushing us down, also push us up, but a lot slower. So Herc is going up and down only by its own power. It's not actually being pulled. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. It could be, pu be pulled up. I suppose it could be pulled down, too, but, uh, yeah, it will float up given enough time. That's just very slow. Yeah.
How many thrusters does Hercules have? Hercules has six thrusters. Two aft thrusters, which we use for forward and backwards, as well as heading control. We have two verticals, up, down. And we have two coaxial laterals. That's just two that allow us to go sideways, and they point at each other. What's the strongest current that Hurt can work in? We had a really strong one last night. Yeah, we, we did. I think that greatly depends on which way we're facing. Okay. Herc's able to go forward at about two knots ish. That's really, really pushing it. One and a half sustained. So I don't know that we'd be working in two knots. I don't even know if we'd be working in a knot and a half. Yeah. Okay. But that's assuming it's we're going straight into it. If it's sideways, then it's all bits are off. Oh, because you only have half the thruster power. Totally, yeah. Yeah. And those thrusters, the lateral thrusters, are wee. Wee. Herc's also <laughs> wider, or sorry, longer than it is <laughs> wide. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to throw a dart sideways it doesn't work so hot. Doesn't look like we're going to get much of a sunset tonight. It's kind of gray outside. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's been a bit of a gray day, hasn't it? The sun was out for like a split second earlier, I think. Yeah, right after launch, mm -hmm. the sun came out for yeah. a warm moment. Beth, how many different ROV systems have you worked with? Mm, that's a fun question. Um, I think actually maybe just uh, four. I've worked with the ROV Jason. I worked with the ROV Sebastian. I've worked with the contracted ROV uh, Global Explorer from Ocean Engineering and ROV Hercules. Cool. Uh, I think that's it. And then I've also been to sea with the Alvin Submersible and the Johnson Sea Link Submersible. Nice. It's a good variety. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I can't think of what it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mbari, I've been out with one of theirs. Oh, cool. ROV Ventana, I think was what it's called, on the Point Lobos. Yeah. That was a long time ago. All right, let's go slow through this section. Just go to 20. All right, cutting back. How many different ROVs have you flown, Trevor? Uh, if we count all of OETs as separate ROVs, all four of them, then I've flown, I think, nine. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Which one am I missing? I think nine. Is there um, a particular reason you wanted to slow down through this part? Yeah, the water looks really good here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, looking at the winch drum. Oh, because we're a little bit towards of a, the end. Well, it's it's a little not perfect. Yeah. Which has a possibility of the cable being knifed in and coming off badly. It's pretty low possibility at this level, but it's just easier to catch it when it's going slower. And we'll speed up again in like two minutes. Yeah, okay. Stephen, do you mind putting up the, uh, I don't know what to call it, drum cam, winch cam? What do we call that? In channel three? That one's called Future Winch. Future Winch. <laughs> yeah, it shows what the winch <laughs> is about to do. That's what Trevor calls it. <laughs> All right, here's the critical moment, and it looks good. So for our folks watching at home who haven't ever watched a Nautilus dive before um, or never seen the 
a launch uh, as we descend down to the bottom. The ROV Atlanta is connected to the ship via a very strong cable, which is wound up on this drum. And it's being fed up over the ship, uh, over the A-frame, which we can show you in a moment. And so as we're ascending or descending, we're keeping an eye on that to make sure that the cable is either unspooling or spooling correctly. Yeah, now you see the A-frame view. So that cable is coming out um, from a, I'm not actually sure what deck it's on. And uh, there, oh yeah, look at that. Steven <laughs> has control of the cameras. Wow. So it's coming out there. It's being paid out slowly over the A-frame. And then Atalanta is hanging down below that and Herc out in front. Steven, that was some top tier video maneuvering right there. Thanks. I think as soon as we're off this layer, I think we can speed up again. There's I'll the one try. spot that looks not great. That spot's totally fine. It gets better as we go past that. Right there is the only spot I'm worried about, but we can, I think it'll be okay. So we can go. We can zip, zip, zoop, zoop. All right, back to 30. Sure, yeah. Let's do 29.30. 29.30. Oh, and now on the uh, Channel 3 and the quad view, uh, you can also see we have a camera aft of the ship. So you can see the cable hanging down but out of the A-frame. Oh, and it's a good view when we're doing launch and recoveries. And then 1,100 meters from there, it comes into the back of Atalanta. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a cool shot. And you can see Hercules off below in the distance. Oh, yeah. And that tether comes into Hercules here. Oh. Just can't really see it too well, but yeah, that's your tether tour. That's very cool. Thank that you, is, Steven. That is a cool view. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's a very abstract view. I, kind of I feel like I'm watching like a film noir. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the sun. <laughs> <laughs> On the last year, we had the white tip shark in this view biting, yeah, right. biting at the tether. <gasps> really? Yeah. Is that a highlight somewhere that I can see? Oh, I don't see? know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, not great for the tether. I'm not sure that we record <laughs> this view. Do we, Steven? Uh, we do, but we don't always save it. It's yeah. kind of on oh, record in case uh, there's we a need problem. It. A problem, or uh, yeah, yeah, or an, or a whale, or something really cool. Uh, right. So that may have been saved. I'm not sure. Someone's wondering, how long does it take to physically adapt to life on board the Nautilus? I think it I depends on the person. I don't know ever adapt. <laughs> depends I on the weather, too. Depends on the weather. Thank you. That's a very good point. Yeah, it depends. I think after a week, I'm feeling I got my legs, I think. That's definitely not it. Yeah, I've stopped falling on things. Which as is great. The, as the boat moves, yeah, <laughs> so I guess that's Which is great. <laughs> I think I've finally stopped feeling nauseous all the time. I'm it was still, rough. I'm still not used to eating all the time. Yeah. There's just a lot of... Wow, you're just going through all the camera angles. <laughs> what is this? I don't even know this view. This <laughs> is just another view of the winch. Okay. Yep. Is that a CD hanging in front of it? That is a washer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when the winch isn't moving, it's hard to tell if these cameras are working because it just looks like a static picture. Yeah, right. So with these washers, this one has one in the frame as well. You can just, it's easy for the video engineers to confirm that the cameras are live. Yeah, right. Because they're moving, moving in the seas. Yep. Yep. Clever. So you're actually doing a little research right now on your, on your cameras. Yeah, I was just trying to, you know, show the, all the places <laughs> that
cable goes. That's quite a journey from the spool to the... It is. Do you know how many miles of cabling is on the ship to enable all these camera views? No. Would you hazard a guess? Oh. I bet Jeff knows. I mean, there's a lot of there's probably more Ethernet cable for all the computers that are linked to the networks. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're almost halfway there. <laughs> Look at us go. Yay. Maybe we'll get a teeny bit of bottom. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Celebratory blue whale, tiny blue whale. <laughs> what was for dinner? I feel like I got there really late and the chicken was gone. The the really giant roasted chicken. Was, was that it, what that is was? Is it turkey? Was it turkey? I have no it's idea. So big, it's it looked like a turkey. Yeah. I just grabbed whatever was left. I, I, I got up too late. And some pasta. But there were roasted oranges. Yep, that's mm. true. Did Part you try one? I was really curious. I wanted to go back for one. I borrowed one from somebody to add it to my salad as a salad dressing. Oh, that mm. sounds nice. Oh, there was like fried shrimp, I think, up there. Yep. There's yeah. always a big variety of, of That's options. true. Some veggies, some bread. Salad. Vatkes. <laughs> Steven, somebody said, yay, winch cam. <laughs> Underappreciated camera. <laughs> oh, here's a favorite question. What is everybody's favorite sea creature? Mine's a tripod fish. I'm just going to say logger sea turtle because it was my like first real introduction to like touching marine animals. Between that and a sea slug somewhere in the... <laughs> I don't know. i got to pick one. I think tinafores are pretty cool. I mean, they, like, radiate rainbow colors. That's just awesome. That is pretty cool. True. I don't know what mine is. <laughs> too many? Too I many? I have one. I don't think I have a favorite. <laughs> Dumbo octopus are also pretty cool. True, and they're cute. Ooh, what's that? We'll never know. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Could it have my favorite sea creature? We'll never know. Kind of went by pretty quick. It did. Nav, do you mind zooming out on high pack? Oh, I'm not sure she can hear me. Lynette? Hey, this is Beth. Do you mind zooming out on a high pack so I can see the uh, dive track, please? Thank you. Zoom out so I can see all of the waypoints. Steven, do you mind putting high pack on um, channel three? Thanks, Lynette. There's just eight waypoints, correct? Okay. All right. Yeah, so maybe when we come back on shift, <laughs> we'll get to be part of the team that goes from waypoint 7 to waypoint 8. <laughs> but there's actually still a little bit more beyond waypoint 8, so if the dive goes well, maybe we can just keep going. Ooh. 
Is we'll that see. a possibility? Uh, it's unlikely considering our last few dives, we haven't made it to the end of our weight track, <laughs> but you never know. I guess it'll also depend on if between waypoint four and waypoint five, it looks like there's a little saddle there. So whether or not whoever's on shift decides to like boogie across that quickly <laughs> or stops along the way. Could you do a quick gauge check, please? Doesn't need to be written down, just a quick visuals on it. Yeah, absolutely. thanks. So that you can go back to this view you would I like. I have one due in 10 minutes anyway. I could. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just check it now just for just okay. for giggles and grins. Yeah. All right. Primary comp. Where are we at? We're at front porch. Yeah. There it there goes. Looks good. Four. The craft comp. All those look good. Let's see the res. Those look good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Hello, bye. Oh. oh. What was that? <laughs> I didn't get a good look at that. It was it's just like a black blob, and <laughs> then it just went by. So it fast. didn't get a good look oh. at us. <laughs> there it is. That's a jelly mm -hmm. thingy. Don't get too technical now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy to be here with a bunch of marine biologists. <laughs> the jelly thingies have names down here. <laughs> well, you're learning. You didn't call it a jellyfish, so. I yes, I did <laughs> learn that yesterday. No starfish and no jellyfish. They are not fish. That's right. <laughs> That's just bad PR. <laughs> they still call them that a, a lot Killer right around. Killer whales, yeah, Killer whales, instead of orcas. Yeah. They call that, like, we have, uh, near where I live, they have southern resident killer whales, they call them. Mm -hmm. And they, SRKW, and they live in one spot, and that's what they're branded as, southern resident killer whales. Oh. Even by the conservationists. Oh, wow. So, are dolphins type of whale? I don't think so, right? Because... I know that orcas are dolphins. Type of dolphin. Oh. Lynette's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm stumped. I'm also confused. In the in the south, like in the Gulf, there's a fish called a dolphin that's not a dolphin. It's like a fish that you eat. Where is this, Ashton? This is like Gulf Shores, Alabama area. Oh, that sounds about... Okay. <laughs> I was like, have we had anything like that in Georgia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you'll see dolphin on the menu in some places, and it really throws you for a minute. Yeah, that would throw me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it called, like, dolphin fish on the menu? You know, I don't know. Hmm. I, I've heard it referred to just as dolphin so many times. Oh, yeah, we're going out to catch dolphin or there's some dolphin jumping i'm pretty sure that's the same as a mahi mahi yes yeah. i was about uh, to say the same thing <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. should just call it that yeah who chimed in with that was that dwight that was dwight okay <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your watch voice Thank you, dwight. <laughs> i thought so it was I, google talking to me it's also <laughs> i believe a uh, mahi mahi or dolphin is also called dorado Oh, yes, I, I am that. confirming that right now, but <laughs> I have wondered what Dorado is. <laughs> like El Dorado. Mm -hmm. Steven, some folks are chiming in from out in the world saying that uh, dolphins are toothy whales, they think. Don't know if that's true or not, but. <laughs> so, oh. I'm reading now uh, that. Whales and dolphins and porpoises are classified as cetacea. Yes. And within cetacea are two suborders between whales and toothed. Yep, I think you're right. Wait, so what's, what's the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> so orcas are in the toothed whale part, yes. not whale the whale. Opposed to baleen whales, right? 
Yeah. Opposed to filter feeding whales. And orcas fall into the toothed, toothed whale, whale category, category. Not yes. the whale category. Yes. Do you want to really get thrown for a loop here? Oh, yes. Lord. Go ahead. Whales are ungulates, a.k.a. hoofed mammals. Yep, that Say, threw me. All right. Where is the hoof? <laughs> There's no hoof. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand biology. <laughs> <laughs> Ungulates generally refers to like deer, for example. Right. But yeah, a whale huh. is an ungulate. Interesting. Camels, maybe? I don't know. Ungulates? Does it have something to do with their stomachs? Horses? Cows and horses, I think. Yeah. yeah, the Wikipedia page is great. It's like, <laughs> ungulates are hoof mammals. It includes whales. <laughs> like, what is happening here? <laughs> Don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. Yes. <laughs> there are definitely more sources to that, but. <laughs> Front row, how, about how much longer do we have to the bottom, you think? Wow, well, let me tell you. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> we have approximately half an hour or so. Yeah, we should just not talk about biology sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> more ROV questions. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as the microbiologist in the room, or pretending to be one, uh, <laughs> everything we've been talking about is on like one tiny little branch of the tree of life compared <laughs> to bacteria and archaea, <laughs> which are way more diverse genetically. Shelby, what was that question we got from uh, a student the other day about microbes. It was a good one. Oh. She was. Uh, she she had a really good question. I wanted to. Oh, hmm. I don't know. The sheer amount of questions we get from students and kids. Yeah. My my brain. Oh, it was a parasite question, wasn't it? It was a parasite oh, question. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea. I wasn't there, but I remember you talking about it. Oh, well, great. Uh, clearly, I knew it at some point. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember exactly how she phrased it, but it was something to the effect of what's the difference between, like, uh, infectious, parasitic, and a microbe. And Oh, well, uh, the first two are referring to modes of life. <laughs> a microbe is just any kind of life form that you need a microscope to see. Mm -hmm. They have many different modes of life, so you can have uh, like free-living microbes. They don't they don't interact with other organisms uh, in any kind of way that affects their growth. Um, parasitic doesn't always have to also refer to microbes; it can refer to other types of life, and it just means that that the organism that is parasitic is kind of stealing something away from another form of life and making its life more difficult. Um, but you can also have commensal or symbiotic relationships between organisms mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. both partners are benefiting or uh, maybe one partner is benefiting and the other partner doesn't really matter. Um, uh, also can be thought of as mutualism. Um, and then infectious would be for the types of um, uh, growth where it's like not just parasitizing, but you know, really causing harm <laughs> um, in, in a, an infection kind of way. But not most. The majority of microbes uh, are not parasitic or causing infection. In fact, many of them are beneficial. So for the random person that asked that question mm -hmm. some other time, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've answered your question in the future. <laughs> and, and somewhat poorly. <laughs> but I think she had seen that we were looking for rocks that mm -hmm. may contain microbes and was interested in and what they were doing. I am also interested in what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're they're dangerous or infectious or parasitic.
Oh, this is interesting. Does sea life ever get stuck inside an ROV? Oh, yeah, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> they come up with fish stuck in between stuff. They'll, oh. they'll swim into stuff and then not be able to swim out. Oh. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Do you guys just have to put on gloves and just get it right out of there? Absolutely. <laughs> I think I've only found a, I don't know, a dozen fish on her ever. For some reason, it's not very fish catchy. <laughs> Is Argus more fish catchy? Sorry, is someone talking there? Is Argus more fish catchy? You have to go one more time, but louder. Is Argus more fish catchy? <laughs> uh, Argus <laughs> is less fish cat, less fish catchy. I feel like I'm saying catchy. a tongue twister or something. <laughs> Is Argus less fish catchy? Wow, <laughs> wow, that's a good one, yeah. Three times. A lot of mouth movement on that one. Have you ever found anything other than fish stuck <laughs> inside? Sure, rocks. <laughs> I don't know, other seafloor debris. There's a pretty epic story about, uh, in video, of um, the Alvin submersible being attacked by a swordfish. Holy. And the sword getting stuck behind the <gasps> um, the floats and yes. was recovered. Oh my gosh. Not a great day for the swordfish. Why does that sound so familiar? I had not heard that story. That's really cool. I feel like I have heard that story. I think Bob was part of that expedition, so maybe next time you see him, ask him about it. Will we be exploring any hydrothermal vents on this expedition? I don't believe so, right? We are not. No, no vents. No, we're not expecting to right. see any vents, uh, but you never know, because we're true. exploring a part of the sea floor <laughs> we've never seen before. Right. Um, but very unlikely um, there's not any known uh, hydrothermal activity out in this region where we are. I don't know that Nautilus will be doing any hydrothermal work this next season. Mm. I don't think so, no. I have a look. Oh, maybe possibly Loom mapping, maybe mapping in places where that might be a thing. I can't speak to that, but I'm fairly certain we're not doing any ROV vent stuff. Let's see what's coming up. Yeah, most of these upcoming expeditions are focused on seamount type environments. Somebody's wondering, is there marine fun guy found at the dive sites where you are, or is it too deep? They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. There are microscopic fungi everywhere, and it's actually there's a lot of them in basalts and rocks. Um, oh, I want to revisit that, but finish your answer, please. But uh, in terms of like visible uh, fungi on the seafloor, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's an example. But most of it is microscopic. All right, Trevor, what's your question? I, I asked this a couple cruises, and no one's been able to have any answers at all. I'm like, what about any kind of fungi on the seafloor? 
and everyone says, well, we know about, you know, plants, that's seaweed and shallow water. And obviously we study lots and lots of animals, but no one's had a good answer about fungi. So like, tell me everything. <laughs> yeah, so there are a couple groups, uh, research teams that specialize in studying marine fungi in uh, rocks. Okay. Um, it's thought that um, just like uh, in soil, right, one of the things that my, uh, fungi do in soil is they kind of break down material. Uh, they exude compounds that help break down solid material. Uh, that's why they're such an important part of ecosystems to break down big things into smaller things, uh, organic carbon, etc. There's a thought that they maybe are doing something similar in rocks where they're in helping dissolve away and etch into rocks. And there are speculations that these formations that are seen in rocks that kind of look like tubules on a microscopic scale might be related to growth of marine fungi. Um, Wild. I can't remember the different classes. Um, uh, I'm not an expert in that. Um, but uh, suffice it to say, there's definitely fungi. I have colleagues that have cultivated marine fungi from deep sea rocks, even subsea floor rocks, like from hundreds of meters below the sea floor. Oh, from big cores or something? Yeah, from uh, ocean drilling expeditions. Oh, yeah, okay. um, and wow. uh, they're also in marine sediments. Um, and so they're probably playing a very similar role as they do in soil ecosystems um, where they're breaking down complex organic carbon uh, that then the bacteria and everything else break down even further. Um, so they're probably a really important part of the ecosystem. Um, I am not directly studying that in the samples that I'm collecting, but I'm collaborating with a scientist um, at Hampton University who is actually very interested in marine fungi and is trying to cultivate them from some of the samples we're collecting. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. I think Leela is also getting her PhD in oh, right. fungi at methane seeps. I believe. How have I not? Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely talk to her about that. <laughs> <Yeah, definitely laughs> <want to. laughs> is everyone based in Hawaii that makes up the crew? No. <laughs> Very few. Do we want to go around and say where everybody's from? I'll start. I am from good old Atlanta, Georgia, home from the south. That's where I grew up. Annabelle? I'm from Maine. Uh, I am currently working in Maine, but I am not from Maine. <laughs> where are you from, Beth? That's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm for Dan another time. <laughs> from Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, very landlocked sort of place. <laughs> Not on the sea. But beautiful. But beautiful. I yep. love Asheville. It's pretty. Oh, Steve and I. This is Steve. I live in Vermont, but I live most of my life so far in Massachusetts. This is Ashton. I'm from Lubbock, Texas, and I live in New Orleans now. This is Trevor. I'm in British Columbia. This is Lynette. I am from Wisconsin. Nice. Heavy East Coasters, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we got almost all the coasts, right? We got U.S. West Coast, Gulf Coast. North Coast. North Coast, East Coast. Lynette, are you from a part of Wisconsin that's near one of the lakes? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up about two hours from Lake Superior. Okay. What is, the home port for Nautilus is where? Is it Rhode Island? Narragansett? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs> That's where it's flagged. Yeah. Depends what you define a home port, I guess. Uh, I would say it's San Pedro, Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, someone wondering what the white specks are in feed one and feed two. That is marine snow, which is really just organic matter sort of falling from the upper layers to the bottom layers, but I will let Beth check me on that. 
I mean, some of it is likely marine snow, but it may not be exclusively marine snow because we're seeing some things that are actually moving and wiggling. Uh, so larva, zooplankton, um, other forms of life, um, gelatinous organisms, like etc. Oh. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we're looking at, not just detritus or marine snow. And we're looking at two laser beams. Yes, that's important. And we can see the laser beams because the water's not super clear. We learned that from Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still excited about learning that. And I'm so excited that now I know that. I feel smarter. Yeah, it's totally like using your headlights or a flashlight or whatever in the fog versus not the fog. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about it. Versus not the fog. Versus not in fog. <laughs> Two thousand meters. We did Unreal. it. We're gonna get there right in time for handover. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's I get okay. the white balance. We can white balance right now. <laughs> no. Nope. 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 I'm, I want to challenge us to. So, you're supposed to. F it says on the uh, checklist to fill the frame with white tape. So I yep. wonder if we can actually fill 100% of the yeah, frame. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, often it's a corner that's left 70% or something. Yeah. Well, we but it has to stay in the light pool as well. So it's a tricky totally. tricky spot. Sounds like you're up for the challenge, Stephen. <laughs> yep. It's really more a challenge for Trevor because he's got to get the tape in the spot. I just have to zoom in. You got it, Steve. <laughs> Trevor has to not punch Hercules in the face with the arm as well. Yep. That's the real challenge. <laughs> Oh, I guess for some folks just tuning in, maybe they haven't seen other other dives. Um, wondering again why we don't have Argus diving with us and we have at Atlanta instead. So front row, if somebody wants to just give a quick answer to that. Sure. Um, I am driving at Atlanta because Argus uh, is having a couple of problems with its thrusters. They have been burning through motor controllers. So we're troubleshooting that issue, but it's really hard to work with small electronics when you're on a moving vessel. Um, if you open the bottles that the electronics are stored in, it exposes everything to seawater and salt water and all the all the bad things. And so, yeah, we're, we've got some people back on land who are helping us troubleshoot that. And in the meantime, we figured, go ahead with Atalanta. So I think this is the first mission with Atalanta and Herc. Yeah, we've done, earlier this year, we did Hercules and Argus together, and we did Little Hercules and Atalanta together, but I don't think we've ever done, before this cruise, Hercules and Atalanta combination. It's cool having the flexibility to mix and match as operations require. It gives us a lot of flexibility and ease of troubleshooting. She's been doing great. <laughs> mm. And that's really a... A phenomenal situation to be in. Most ships don't sail with backup <laughs> ROVs. <laughs> ROVs. <laughs> so it's really quite a special occasion to be on a ship with four different options. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Very unique. Yeah.
About 15 minutes to bottom. Yep, right on time. How <laughs> <hand up. laughs> Someone said, well, the shifts may change, but the viewers remain. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for, for joining us for the ride. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of being the valet watch, but imagine being the valet viewer. <laughs> you just, just watch the ascents and descents, like, oh, bottom, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> just here for the chatter. And emojis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Always in the same spot. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shaking things up. You haven't showed us the draw a flat box feature yet. A what? Draw a flat box. Is that this bottom region? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <Everybody> <laughs> I don't know, Ooh. dude. These, some of these other ones are much better. <laughs> oh, there's a comet. Uh. Sparkles. <laughs> oh, that one's not that exciting I like either. that one. What does this one do? <laughs> Puts okay. a hole in the seafloor. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> How do my shoes come untied while I'm sitting still? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Because you've been walking through my mind all day. <laughs> 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 if Gabby's listening, I don't mean that. <laughs> 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 I just had 15 minutes to show up the next <laughs> the next watch oh on humor, gosh. so <laughs> we need jokes, guys. <laughs> <sighs> Let's go to a more educational question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. <So> funny, <laughs> how about you guys give a little explanation of why it's so important to fly with two ROVs and why Atalanta has to fly over Hercules? You, you want to or me? I can start, sure. and you can expound. Expound. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of the reason is because uh, Hercules needs to do a lot of like fine tune work down at the bottom. Um, have be really stable with cameras and with a manipulator arm and tools. Um, everything yes. that Hercules is doing. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like fine motor skill work. And so if it was directly taking the whiplash of the tether from the ship as the currents move and as the ship heaves and that sort of thing, then it'd be really hard to do that. So um, Atalanta absorbs, or Argus, absorbs a lot of that uh, whiplash <laughs> and a lot of that movement. <laughs> nice lobsters. <laughs> Main represent here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe crawfish. And, uh, yeah, what else? Why else? Are there more reasons, Trevor? Sure, sure. Okay, so this is a two-body system, the two bodies being the two ROVs, and it excels for a lot of the reasons Ashton mentioned. It gives us the third-person perspective, the eye-in-the-sky view, to give easier navigation as well as amazing, beautiful shots. You get some context of the size of, for example, a sponge next to the size of Hercules, and you can get some real good perspective and understanding from that. So the other way ROVs work is single body system where it's just something like ROV Hercules with no Argus or Atalanta or SLED ROV. And they do that. Uh, there's a couple advantages to that, a couple disadvantages. We still don't have the... <laughs> Beth, I, always, I always imagined you were a, a very attentive student in school, but now I'm, I'm really Just down. Not so sure. Not <laughs> so sure. You can get your PhD and doodle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, single body ROV. So if to decouple the motion from the ship, as Ashton was talking about, they still uh, you can still do that with a single body system. You, you put a what's called a catenary in the main umbilical cable by adding floats to it. So the main cable's heavy, but you add floats and that floats up just a little bit of a section right as it comes out of the vehicle and makes that kind of lazy S shape that we often see between Hercules and whatever sled of choice we're running that day. You can catch uh, a glimpse of that on uh, channel three right now with the Atalanta yeah. butt camera. Yeah. <laughs> so with the single body system, you can still decouple the motion, but you do not, you lose out big time on that third party eye in the sky view. 
Uh, but the, one of the advantages is you only need one ROV. And that saves a lot on cost. Also, you get a little bit more room to move. Uh, Atalanta does not move away from the ship at all. It only has up and down and heading control. To move across the seafloor, you need to move the ship. Whereas with a single body system, you can pull the main umbilical a lot more effectively. So you get a little more scope to work. And there's a couple other technical advantages and disadvantages, but that's kind of the main broad strokes overview. And now we have a dinosaur. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Too soon. Oh. Dang, too, too that was cold. <laughs> <laughs> too but necessary soon. so that we could be here on our day. It's the facts of life, y'all. <laughs> We are at almost 2,300 meters there. Yep, about 10 minutes to go. 11, 10, 11. Do we have an altimeter on either of the vehicles? Yeah, oh, <laughs> do we? Uh, Hercules used the DVL. There's an altitude readout from the Doppler velocity log, which also does subsea navigation. And Atalanta has a straight up altimeter. So Herc's DVO will often hit, uh, depending on the bottom type, about 70 meters off bottom. Okay. And the Atalanta one will do about 30 to 50. Okay. And are there any screens that show us that information? Yeah, are you able to see the Herc GUI screen at all? Let me get that up for you. Thanks. Might take a minute. Yep. All good. In the meantime, someone said, I saw a penguin on the telly. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in from Britain. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Yay. Okay, on channel three, you should see the Herc GUI computer now. Yep. Okay, can you see this big red Doppler zero beams? Yes, yep. and we can see your cursor. Yeah, great. So, the Doppler zero beams, oh, just got a little ping of one. Might be getting close-ish, close adjacent. Sometimes it's just noise. Anyway, when that shows three of four beams, then we start getting a altitude. And when we have four, we have bottom lock. Up on the left here, altitude, 0 0.2 means no data because yep. that's how far we are off bottom when we're landed. That's how far the DVL is off bottom. So that's what we've entered as the default value. But 0 0.2 meters generally means no data. So we'll start to get one, two, then three beams on this. That means beams of sound come back to their respective sensors, and that'll start piping in altitude data. And you can see Argus altitude here right now, random number generator. But when that locks in, <laughs> it'll look less random. Trevor, how are we doing with ship holding station? Do we know it's yet? It's doing great. It has held station this whole dive, and it has moved, I don't know, yeah, it feels like 10 it's meters. Been right, right on top. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's encouraging. Let's see. Uh, I guess it'll all depend on what the current's like at the bottom, too. Yes. There's Bobby Argus. <laughs> <laughs> Checking on the winch. What, what are you checking for when we someone goes there in right person? Right now he's looking at the rotating junction box to see that it's not flapped open. He's also looking at the level line to make sure the whiskers are appropriately measuring everything. General overview. I'm just narrating what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> looking at the winch <laughs> drum, see if it's spooling and unspooling correctly. He's just going to visually inspect that for a long time. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Very thorough. Yep, just make sure. <laughs> This is good. He's seeing the full rotation or two. Yeah. Make sure all the spots look like they're playing nicely. Checking the HPU itself. I'm going to check the oil level. Leaning over. Oil level. Check. Now he's checking the traction shivs. 
It's going to get underneath, make sure the cable is in the grooves. And now he's going to go this way. What's he checking for now? What's next? Oh, he's mixing checking it up. Checking for the exit. See ya. We got three beams on the Doppler. Three beams, 91 meters off bottom. Hey. Oh, four now. So you can see the altitude's pretty noisy right now because we're so far off. And that'll lock in as we get closer. You can see where the winch hold is from the deck if you saw Paul coming out of the... Oh, wow. We're just Channel following 3. him yep. around. <laughs> Paul can. <laughs> Not creepy or anything. <laughs> Big this is brother why Nautilus. <laughs> This is why I'm always self-conscious to check the winch before shift. Like, yeah. Who's watching? The whole world. Yeah, like the whole world. You go down there, you feel like the most removed from any other person on board. But you're still connected to everybody at home. Except in that little And there's like room. two cameras yeah. in there. There's five, yeah. six cameras. Okay. Six, six or five? Six. Uh, oh, six. Yeah, because yeah. that one. Yeah. And there's those four, yeah. the other, the winch alt alt. Oh, yeah. And then that one. Four beams. All right, my altitude's locked in at about, no, it was 50-ish meters. 50-ish sounds semi-reasonable. Yeah. So the Doppler icon has turned green. Yay. Mm. Nice. It's a perfect okay, setup the for the next there? shift. Yes, I do. And let's slow oh, down to 25. 50 meters. All right, slowing down. Ooh, probably a little too much. Start to see some bottom in Atalanta. You can turn your thrusters on, but leave auto heading off. All right, thrusters coming on. Stephen, do you mind putting up the uh, sonar view? So we can start to see what the seafloor looks like. Awesome. So for any new audience members or anybody that needs a refresher, channel three, we've got the sonar view. On the left side is the view from ROV Atalanta. And on the right side is the view from uh, ROV Hercules. And so as the colors get brighter, that's an indication of reflection of the sound, indicating there's something in that vicinity, um, depending on the heading. And so ROV Ooh. Atalanta kind of sees a, a wider swath, whereas ROV Hercules, we're just now starting to see some reflections come into view. We're about 30 meters off bottom. We're just now starting to see bottom in the ROV Hercules camera on channel one. And there's some sponges. First animal sighting. We're gonna do a handoff in the video chair. Yeah. See everyone later. Thanks, Steven. Yeah, so for anybody watching from home, we're in the middle of a shift change here. So front row has gone quiet as they're handing over piloting and navigation and video duties to the next crew. And our back row is starting to change out as well.
Uh, Stan Miami got a little closer to him. Too far away to turn around properly. Dan, do you want the dead reckoning? Um. Yeah, sure. I have uh, no autos on at the moment. Find a likely spot to do our thing here. Okay, Paul, I should be to the north of you. You can spin uh, maybe counterclockwise. everyone. Hello, hello. Aloha. Let's start with um, Katachi. Can you zoom out high pack a little bit just so we can see where the next waypoint uh, is? That's when you're ready, Paul, you can get the uh, craft out and we'll do the white balance. Yeah, it is north, yep. I can uh, play that? with that a lot too while you're doing that. Yeah, that's good. That, that's the general direction we're going to be moving, and I think we can get ready for a move. I don't see any rocks worth sampling here. Uh, we're going to do all of our bottom stuff here, white balance, gauge Oh, check, Roger. Blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. Just, uh, just when I walked in here, they had bottom in sight, so. <laughs> Roger the rock. Yeah, I think that rock is crawling away, so. Um, um, cool. I don't know what's going on there. Ready for the uh, arm for white balance? Ready, ready. Cool. Arm coming on. You can see as soon as you kick it on, it's in the bottom right view of the Zeus there. Freeze it there if you want, and uh, while you're while he, while Jeff's doing his magic, I'm going to turn another light on for him. Um, you can uh, do the gauge check. Copy that. Atlanta should be coming around by now. Yep. Just in view. Ready, Dan. And can you um, put bubble back on the hit one on bubble? Just so I got a ref there Raj. when the cam goes back. Thanks. Are you ready, Dan? All good. Well, I can see myself in Atlanta now, so. Uh, Dan, do you mind if I reset the DVL? Yeah, you are free to reset DVL. All right. Video's happy, happy. Roger. Ready? For uh, stow the arm? Yep, you can park it. What is it? Five better. Uh, were the gauges all good, or did you get a chance for Didn't get a chance yet. So immediate uphill is about 300-ish. Uh, All right, craft secure. Roger, you want to just uh, stray from real quick for me? Yeah. Yep, three, three. good. Good. Four. Three, four, five, six. Uh, three, four, four, four six. six. That's all I need. I know that one's good. I got a level sensor on it. 
go back to one if you want. Yeah, I'm trying. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Remember those numbers, three, four, four, six. Pulling about 40 amps. i uh, just check some other numbers here real quick while I'm thinking about it. Those are all good. Okay. Green lights across the board. Okay, back row. We all right. are all yours. Good sign. Great. Already seeing some stuff I'd like you to zoom in on, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's <laughs> penguin. <laughs> Zoom in Under on the, the penguin. penguin. Right. <laughs> I'll kind of kick us off with just the overall goals of our watch here and the, the dive in general. So we just got to the bottom. We're at waypoint one. This is dive H1918. We are on what we call uh, unnamed East Seamount. And we're on a ridge that uh, is we're going to traverse, uh, working our way to the north and northeast, or right, sorry, yeah. north and northwest. And uh, for about the next 10 hours, we'll be exploring along this ridge uh, and keeping an eye out for examining all the uh, benthic diversity here and the ecosystem and look, looking for rock samples to collect that um, can help us tell us about the age and origin of, of this ridge feature. And we're also looking for rock samples that have ferromanganese crusts on them uh, so that we can study them in more detail and try to understand the uh, microbes that are living within those crusts and other aspects of the thickness and composition of the crusts. So we'll be exploring this for about the next 10 hours and uh, we're looking forward to getting underway here. Um, I'm good for a vessel move if we're, if we're ready to start that show. If you guys are in the back there. <laughs> yep, uh, waypoint two is how far? Uh, 210 meters. You were at your uh, maximum tether limit there. <laughs> yeah, I think on you can uh, step step us huh? in that direction, and we'll. Uh, oh, I know. Roger. Yeah, it'll take uh, probably at this depth a uh, good five minutes before Argus starts to go. So. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Bridge. This is Nav. Can we please go 200 meters north? Uh, 0.3 knots. Let's just time it. I didn't think these rocks looked very loose here, but um, I could be wrong. You probably got, I'm, I'm going to guess 10 minutes, so it's 10 after the hour. Let's see how long it takes for the little blue dots there to. Well, let's uh, zoom out and look around, and maybe there's a crust sample that we could try to grab here. Want to poke a few while we're sitting here? Sure. Any uh, of interest that you want to point out on the Telestrator? I would, I would say the one in the bottom of the Zeus camera is this. Um. Actually, I'll call out. Uh, I'll, I'll call out to Beth if she's in the lounge. Uh, she could uh, guide this a little more. There's uh, another but one right. We're looking for a loose one, right? of course, but also one that looks like it might be a good crust. So yeah, it seemed to be in a tight spot there, Paul. Some of those, yeah. maybe. <laughs> You'll have to, uh, yaw it. yeah, you got it. There. Yeah, these uh, kind of low ones, just give them a poke. The one right yeah. above the jaws, I would say, is loose. Yeah, that one's loose. That one's loose. And then the okay, one. Okay, they're all loose. That one's loose. Yep. How about this one right here? It looks like a bowling ball. Oh. oh. No. Maybe if we pull it. Nope. 
Well, that one right in front of you is, looks pretty easy to grab. Yeah, any of this bottom pile, you want this uh, low one? Sure. Let's take a look at it. This is, uh, this is a bell rock, so that's going to be starboard side, eh? Uh, this, I think, could be a Beth rock. Oh. oh, it's a twofer. <laughs> wow. Sort of a nodule, too. We could keep it. Zoom in there for him a bit, Jeff. Are the lasers on? Uh, not yet, but we can turn them on. I got it. You got it? Well, the lasers looks like, are uh, on. That looks oh, like pretty dark uh, manganese coating to me. Just about that. Yeah, looks good, you guys. All right, well, let me put this in view of the lasers. Get a little spin action. A little bonus coral on there, too. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Where did you decide they were going? Uh, front, front, front bio. Box? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Beth. That looks good. Great. Great. Two good for on. one, Beth. Yeah. Got good on the uh, zoom. Um, could you yeah, zoom in again, so. real quick? Oh. Can we have that lasers on the small rock? Get uh, one laser no. on it. Yeah, not really. Just one of them. Yeah, that's fine. The uh, marks on the jaws, FYI, those uh, tape marks, the red and the orange, are each one half inch. Okay. So they're all right, three inches all, all together they're marked on the jaws. Mm. All right. Okay, good. Jeff, if you want to go wide, we'll... Which one are we going for? Lambda. Copy that. One in. Take a peek on bubble. I think we want to pair this with a Niskin sample. Copy that. Roger. You're happy to do the Niskin uh, sitting here on the side of the cliff, are you? I think that was a uh, science question. Is this location okay? Like just right where we are? Yes. And uh, I go for the top red one here, number one. Yes, please. minutes and Argus still hasn't moved. The boat's gone uh, yeah. 40 meters, 40, 50 meters. All right. Oh, oh you're going to need another two for there. Oh, did two go? No. No, no. Oh, good. No, oh, it was. All right. Do we see it in the back there? I think so. Yep. yep. Nice one, Paul. Thank you. Fortunately, off. All right. We're already seeing a little bit of different coral diversity than yesterday's dive, seeing some branched bamboo corals, whereas yesterday the bamboo coral we saw a lot of was a sort of whip-like single branch. Seeing some Chrysogorgia bottle brush corals as well, and some mushroom corals. Uh, 
Argus is finally on the move. Seven minutes. So Katashi, it's kind of nice to like pay attention to like roughly, so we know it's about seven minutes from like a ship move to when we start to feel the uh, movement. Ooh. And wow. Each dive that can change depending on the depth. Got it. And current. And current, yeah. Whether we're moving against it or with it, in this case, uh, sideways to it. You want to zoom in a bit there for me, Jeff? Nice look at a. I love the uh, hemicorallian here. Hemicorallian. Some of my uh, first coral experiences were these guys in the Pacific Northwest. They're just like two meters tall. Wow. Whoa. We were trying to uh, get a dead stump uh, so they could age it, and we couldn't. <laughs> Pulling on a, there was a broken one like the one we saw the other night, and we could not break it off. It was so wow. Easy. Okay. How uh, how That's long do they live? Yep. I'm not sure. Question for Ryan. Probably hundreds of years, I would say, on the order of hundreds. That's awesome. Uh, some black corals live for. Uh, up to, I think, 4,000 years. Wow. Yeah. We're yeah, seeing we a lot of uh, sort of bare skeleton here as well, perhaps. Signs of predation like we were seeing yesterday, some sea stars eating those bamboo corals, or just very old dead coral. Oh, can't do the Z-bias. Has Argus moved yet? Yeah, we're definitely moving. Yeah, it took us about seven minutes before it started moving there. So that was one of those issues where uh, resetting the auto heading totally changed it. Mm. That's a nice distance right there, I like it. slowly calibrating to your preferred delta. Roger. Which is basically as close as you can get without hitting <laughs> the bottom or Hercules. Just a bit. It's nice to see more in front. Maybe Jeff might be zoomed in there. Can we get no? a snap zoom on this glass sponge here? Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. species at the base there. Yeah. A little yeah. bit different from yeah, those guys. It looks guys. like it might be a sort of Feriaday at the base maybe. But oh, why her is being so bouncy? Then? Perhaps Bolasoma is a stalked one. Did you say Bolosoma? I believe so, yeah. Well, 
Okay. Can we uh, slow the ship down to point two? Copy, Katachi. Could you repeat that, please? Can we slow the ship down to point two? Yes, sir. Is that the, is that the published speed of the dive plan, isn't it? Bridge, this is nav. Uh, please slow down the speed to point two knots. Thank you. If I have one. Is that Not another that uh, hemicorallium? Yeah, these are both hemicorallium here. You're right about that. A lot of these little coral stalks are are uh, are dead. Yeah. Is that an anemone? Anem yeah, it looks different than what we've been seeing. Could we take a look yeah. at this anemone here? Sure, you can zoom in a bit there if you want to. Perfect, thanks. I don't think it's Paragorgia, Asako. Well, yeah, it looks like hemicorallium to me. What's the, the uh, aren't really moving. The what's current. the difference? Um, they're in different groups. The Paragorgia, you can the way I notice the difference is that their branches sort of move in the current, whereas the hemicorallium is a little more structurally sound. It sort of just stays taut. Zoom in a bit more if you want. Yep. I'll come down and look at the right, right here below. That's good. It's got a wide base, two big branches. Yeah, and the, the skeleton is a little, looks a little thicker on hemicorallium. So this looks like a different type of actinostolid anemone. Go a little tighter if you want. Yeah, perfect. Any idea what that sponge is, Ryan? Sponge? I mean, uh, anemone. Um, is, is that an anemone? It's a, yeah, it's a type of actinostolid anemone, I think. That's a great look at it, thanks. Okay. I've uh, changed my heading to kind of keep you in view, Dan. Roger, I'm way behind the curve here. Uh, you want to stop him up for a minute? Let me catch up. Bridge, this is Nev. Please hold position. I'm going to stay uh, just a little bit higher tonight, Paul. We got the weather, so take those big two meter, three meter heaves. Yeah, I was just noticing that. Mm -hmm. Not quite as calm, so we can't. So rogue wave come through and we dip it. Couple 
little sponges coming up here. I'll try and come over those. different looking there too. Mm -hmm. Can uh, push in a bit Jeff as I get closer to this guy if you want. Sort of interesting texture in the skeleton. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. We haven't seen this yet. Looks like some type of glass sponge. Guys, do you happen to know if the still camera's on? And if you could cycle power through it, if so? Uh, let me check. You know how to do it, Paul? Uh, science. science. Ethernet bottle and sextant. So turn it on and off? Are they both on? Yeah, they are both on. Um, It looks to me like I am, but I'm not too sure what she's... Um, did you... Uh, Remote desktop into the, were you able to get to the NUC? Pull the still cam up on your left uh, monitor when you get a chance. Which uh, screen is it? Uh, let's go left monitor, or yeah, left monitor still cam. This guy here. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, yep, you should have, what, what's that dialog box say? Can't Cannot find connect it. Connect to the camera, check that the PC remote has been turned on by operating yeah, the that's, uh, camera. So, cycle power to just the camera. Copy that. Pilots, are we able to collect a piece of that glass sponge by chance? The one we left? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to come up, All Paul. Right. Power coming back on. Don't think we've seen this one Tachi, yet. So. can we move the ship uh, 40 meters south? Yep. Bridge, this is Nev. Thank you. Here. We are, yeah. Can you turn off your, uh, I'll just wait for it. Maybe I can come around the side here. George, you can uh, go as fast as you want on that southerly move. <laughs> Ten knots. Just kidding. <laughs> Give it all you've got. <laughs> Do not bring the main engine online. <laughs> Just don't make up the chief engineer with the bow thruster. So close yet so far. Um, well, we're waiting for the ship and go look at the other sponge if you want. Sure. I just can't quite get there. We're yeah, to try to remember where that one is though, so we can go get back to it. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, this one sort of has that same 
texture that looks different than anything we've seen so far. Push in there a bit if you want, Jeff. Kind of a, won't be super stable because we're tugging with the uh, Atlanta there, but. Yeah, it might be the same species. Yeah, look at that. So we could go for a sample. How do you want to do it? Uh, just break off a piece or slurp it? I don't know. Is that the other one? I believe so, or another one, just individual yeah. of the same species. six meters on the vessel move. Um, you want to set your auto heading to north? So you didn't see it on this, did we? No, not in the wish list yeah. or the guide. One of our scientists ashore, I think that sponge has a could tentatively be Septrulophora or something similar to that. You can probably come back down five now, Paul. Sounds good. Send a picture to Chris. He doesn't seem to be with us tonight. Feels like we've at least Atalanta has stopped moving north. Yeah, it's coming south, uh, maybe a couple meters now. Anything else you want to look at while we're waiting here? Um, well, I'm trying to decide if that other sponge is the same species as the first one, and we could just get a sample of it. ship has stopped moving at this point, right? Yeah, he's just finishing the move. Yep. Cool. I don't see it on any cheat sheet here. I'll take another 20 to the south. Okay. Bridge, this is Nav. Thank you.
it kind of keeping it set at the low point of the swells. We've got 10 meters of altitude on yeah. Argus. Yeah, that's probably as low as we want to get. Yeah. Yeah, this one looks different than any that are in the database. Zoom in there while we're waiting, Jeff. Yeah, this is a Chrysogorgia here we're zooming in on. Bottle brush is the common name. It's just a random landing. Is that a cup coral in the background or a Might be a sh shrimp, worm. actually. What's that? Might be a shrimp. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing antennae. Yep. How could I mistake a shrimp for a cup coral? <laughs> I see what you wait, what you were thinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> the white backside. It's coming out to fight you. You can, uh, if you want, Jeff. You can put the DSC in uh, one of the black spaces up there. You're bored. Is the ship still moving south? We're yeah, come all I the way back to where we started. With yeah, we had to do uh, basically 60 meters south, so we got about a 50 meter layback, as we call it. Wow. Well, yeah, the ship has uh, stopped moving. Can we try to try for that sample so we can keep moving on? Yeah, I'm just waiting for... Uh, I'm still 20 meters away from Argus there. Oh. That last 20 meters should should bring it. I think our preference is for the first of those two sponges, if possible. Let's do uh, 20 west now. I don't for sure get us there. Is it working? Bridge now? nav. Uh, can we get 20 meters to the west, please? Thanks. Can I spin around to the west? Do you think we have enough tether for that? No. Nope. Not yet. We don't. Copy that. Not oh, while yeah. you're up. You're up uh, 20 up meters off yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. You might be able to come down a little now, Paul. But yeah. But yeah, don't don't break the bank. <laughs> have to wait for it. What did you want to see up in the blank there, Dan? Uh, the digital stills cam should be on should one be of the PCs. That should be it there. Let me see if that's. What's that? I said that should be it in the one with all the computer GAC. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Is there this one, Jeff? Let me change computers here. One of our 80 computers. How about that one? Yeah, that's yeah. the baby. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. When George came back down to the south, Argus went 20 meters east. The current. Paul and I, we haven't really heard from you yet. <laughs> well, we're kind of waiting on the ship now, so there's. Yeah. Time. Sounds good, because we have a couple of questions that have been right. coming in. Question for the video team. Is adjusting the gain to match what you're looking at difficult to do? Is it a lot of work dialing it up and down constantly? Um, no, it's not. 
the, the, my thumb is resting on the on a little knob that makes it go darker or brighter, and it's that easy. Awesome, thank you. We'll try for a DSC shot on this guy while we're waiting. Sounds good. An elegant landing here. Bonk. <laughs> like walking my dog when he's being bad. I have to keep yanking his leash. Where is the EV Nautilus currently based? On Oahu? Yes. That's not its official home port, but that's the home port we use while we're basing our operations in and out of Hawaii uh, in Honolulu at the uh, University of Hawaii Marine Science Center. Awesome. Thank you. Looks like another 20, George. Jeez. West, west, you mean? Yeah, another 20 west. <laughs> Zoom in there again on this guy if you want to. Make a white screen. Down, uh, try coming down now. Five, Paul. See what happens. Yeah. Or three, whatever. Whatever you can give me. <laughs> We're bringing the ship back to where we start. <laughs> yeah, we've gone. Uh, <laughs> About halfway. What do we do? 60, 240s south and 220s west? Yeah. It's interesting when we stopped, the Argus went east. Wasn't expecting that. That's the current, so we were towing it, and then when we stopped towing it, it, it went downwind. Yeah, I'm thinking to avoid this in the future, we, we ought to. We, st we sort of started with a ship move instead of started with an ROV move. And we were always behind it. Well, we did start with an ROV move. I was out front when we started. Uh, we slowed down to, you can zoom there if you want to. Uh, we slowed down to alleviate that, but our our layback is, as I mentioned, about 50 meters. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to come if up you, with a scenario where we can stay ahead of it so that we can, if we do want a sample, we don't have to move the ship back you know. uh, with this current and that layback it's we're always up against yeah up against that so one thing that will help if you guys want to sample is committing earlier and we can usually get it before we deciding right away yeah yeah so what's happening there is um, I know you do the math at, at point two it takes X amount of time for Argus to move 40 meters so if we're out front and we have the full tether in the bank. Right, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. You have that um, that amount of time. And a lot of times during the sample, Argus is indeed running over us. and um, Then we have to make up the ground. And so we stop twice to look at, you know, stop twice to smell the flowers there. And the other thing that got us here was the the Easter easterly move. So. But yeah, I generally try and stay out ahead. But every time we stop to look at um, something, we lose a little bit of that. Is that the uh, that sponge time. that we're it's looking probably for? Better. <laughs> this is the one. Yeah. And did we decide what the uh, sample method is going to be? Leela's with us. She can help. Do we, uh, uh, would this sponge be a slurp or a, or a grab? Yeah. Can you come down a bit more, Paul? Raj. 
Yeah, I think the slurp might be the better approach. I was thinking that too. Depends on how big a piece you want, eh? The size of the nozzle. Or I'll do that. Yeah, we just want to okay, be able to Paul. look at Get your weapon out, I'll deal with that make up its skeleton yeah, under the microscope. The, uh, camera. No, no, no. Slurp is good. Oh, we got a swimming crinoid there. Oh. I like those. Mm -hmm. Should have, uh, we could have had our slurp out and ready too while we were waiting. Can you, uh, overlook that? And down a little bit. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking of grab. But so. uh, Could be a new a new sponge to science. We don't know. I don't know. I couldn't find it in any of these or any of these. Okay, hold on, let me get the plush going here. Hold on before you get too close. It's nice to be able to see a little bit of the end of the nozzle. If you turn your wrist to the left just a bit. Is that good or more? Uh, it's just a nice to have. You don't have to. I think it's a little different. Okay, Jeff, you can push in a little bit more there. Are we uh, ready? We are ready. I've never seen anything quite like the texture of this sponge, I don't think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just push it right in there. Beautiful. Great. Spongy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a sponge cake. Okay, hold what you got there. I'll see what goes in the jar. Midair. Uh, Midair scoop. It's probably plenty, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Nicely done, Paul. Did you get it logged, Fiona? Cool. All right, start the ship moving again. Yep. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nav. Zoom in there. Uh, please make a move of 150 meters for uh, 21. Is this full zoom? Uh, yeah, that's correct. That's great, thank you. The base of these sponges that we're seeing looks similar to that one we just saw earlier where you were saying you've never seen a sponge base like that. Yeah, both uh, both of these sponges are pretty unique looking. Nice example, Paul. Thank That's you. exciting. Potentially a new species. Okay, yeah. I'm going to make up some time here and get back out in front of Argus. How do the sponges stay so clean with all the sea snow falling all the time? So sponges are um, filter feeding, so they're constantly pumping water throughout their body. Mm. Um, and that tends to keep the sediment off of them. And that's why the the when you see a dead sponge, uh, give me the rail you'll see a lot of sediment on gathered up on the skeleton, and they look brown. Mm. Thank you. Lots of sponge in that sample jar, I love it. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay. Try and come on you there. 
Okay, another question. Can sponges heal or and recover from these collections or will it always have a little puka inside of it? So sponges are um, pretty remarkably resilient animals. They can actually, many species off, even, even if you break off a piece of it and it falls next to it, it can form a whole new animal. So um, they're able to, to regrow and, and regenerate pretty well. Um, that's not the case for all animals, but sponges are uh, pretty unique in that way. Very cool, thank you. This looks like another sponge that the same kind that we just gathered from Right, now. same sort of bumpy pattern on the outside. It makes me think of, you know, um, ramen or like Simon package, <laughs> the noodles. Right, yeah. It's like that same kind of bumpiness. <laughs> so Chris Kelly, our lead scientist ashore, will be happy to see all this interesting sponge diversity down here. He's a sponge expert. I'm moving just a little bit faster than usual here. I'm still not uh, just under Argus at the moment. So. How long do you think it took for these sponges to grow to this size? Um, it's hard to say. Sponges, we've never really figured out how to age them. So, um, it, many years probably, especially a, a large sponge like that. Awesome. Thank you. I've got uh, one other question for you. You mentioned that they pump um, water through, right? Uh, yes. Is that actively pumping somehow, or is that just their like structure kind of guides the current? Both actually, so their structure is really well um, well suited to um, taking advantage of natural currents and moving them through the different canals and pores throughout their um, body. But they actually actively pump water through their bodies as well. They breathe. Awesome. I was wondering, did we have to take like a water sample when we took that um, sponge sample? No need, probably. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Sounds good. There's um, one of the BC scientists, um, we call her the sponge lady. We uh, take a fluorescein down on the vehicle and we waft fluorescein around the base of the sponge and then watch them exhale it through their osculum. Cool. It's pretty cool. And then we take a, um, a little stainless steel canister with a syringe, a needle on it, and stick it inside the osculum and do it. It's like a little mini Niskin. Wow. Yeah, it's, that's a very cool to watch. Is that Sally Lay's, Dan? Yeah, Sally the Sponge Lady. Right. Wow, a lot of these look dead, right? Yeah. Quite a few of them don't have any living tissue on them. And then there's quite a, some like this one on the left that have some living tissue and then quite a bit of yeah. exposed skeleton. You can really see why they're called bamboo corals. When you see the exposed skeleton like this, you can see the sort of banding yeah. structure on it that looks like bamboo. It's really pretty. We've only seen the one stalk bamboo, I feel, for the most part lately. Yeah, today we're seeing some branching ones, which is cool to see. You're doing a point two, are you, George? Can you uh, make it point two? Thank you. I know it's splitting hairs on a multi-ton vessel, but I'll take it. A little Looks good practice on Hawaiian terms. The mm -hmm. sponge is a huakai, and in Hawaiian, glass is aniani. So if there, if it was a Glass sponge, it'll be like, hua kai ani ani. Nice. Yep. There looks like another one of these. Yeah, right there. Of course wow, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been, if we wouldn't have sampled it, it would have been the only one you saw the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite steep here. Good 
overview there. I can. Uh, and there's a couple of the whip-like bamboos here too. That real, what is that sponge called when it looks like a flower at the top of the skinny? That's bolosoma, most likely. Bolosoma. Yeah, the stalked glass sponge. I see a lot of those out here. I call them tulip sponges, but that's probably not correct. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep chasing me up, Paul. Oh, it's, it's right steep here. Nice having you back out in front, though. Yeah. Yeah, perfect there. I can head for the... We are currently 2,451 meters deep, yeah? Yeah. And that was the depth of Hercules. Someone was just asking our um, how deep we are. Got another one. We're climbing the mountain to the to the top. Wouldn't might quite make it to the top of Haleolica. Can we get a snap zoom on right? this no. white? Yeah, go ahead. Here. Yeah. Interesting, a different species here. I can hold still. Cannot. Can't quite tell if that's a what type of octocoral this is. From Noida, probably. Yeah, some type of white primnoid fan coral. Do you want me to uh, hold still for a better ID? Yeah, if you could, we yeah, get we a little max zoom on it too. Let's see if we can get a good look at a polyp. Okay, Jeff. Try again. I gotta put a foot down. That's great, thank you. might have to do some uh, step moves, Katachi. It's pretty steep here. Copy that. One of our other techniques is just to do uh, like 20 or 40 meter moves. It gives us a little bit more time to... Interesting how much bare skeleton we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if what the reason for that is. Well, there definitely is a strong current, right? And it's uh, left to right. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. To the, the east. The catenary in the cable has the vehicles off the bow of the ship, you know? Steep current, or good current, and uh, pretty close to uh, vertical. But usually they like the current. But spin sideways. Something else might be going on get a sense of uh, how steep it is there. Mm 
There is this sort of Goldilocks point, though, where currents get too strong. It does yep. affect them. Yeah, it doesn't look very healthy, sadly. Still a good amount of diversity, though. Now we're seeing a few of these yellow, potentially Canthagorgia corals. Canthagorgia. It's got a double stock. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's a twin. Is that a sea cucumber? Oh, good eye, Katashi, mm. yeah. Could take a oh. quick zoom at that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Sea cucumber. Reaching up for some food, maybe? Yep. You can get a good look at its tube feet there. Same type of tube feet you see on a sea star. Oh. I can't quite get close enough without giant coral in there. Yeah, I think you knocked it a little. Sorry. My bad. Yep. You did get a little auto sample. Looks like it. Oh, just fell. So there are a few <laughs> stolen ephyrin corals colonizing the dead base of one of these bamboo corals. Sort of an example of the succession that happens. Even these dead oh, yeah. corals serve as useful habitat for other things. Yeah, it must be a really strong current here, knocking things over. Yeah, a lot of stuff knocked over. There was a comment. What are the um, brown tendrils on the coral stalks? I feel like those are the sea stars, or? Um, not sure what they're referring to. They might be referring to the banding that's on bamboo coral skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, or they might be referring to some animal that's on there that I, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get another look at one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I totally agree. There aren't there aren't as many sea stars um, on this. No. As much as the other two thus far. Yeah, that's interesting. Although there's a lot of what looks like would be good food for them, so mm -hmm. they're missing out. <laughs> well, this is the first black coral I think we've seen. A Bathy Pathy's over here. Bathy Pathy. Right where the lasers are, yeah. Yep. There's a star on that coral. Having a meal. Or filter feeding, I'm not sure. Chrysogorgia? Yeah, a couple Chrysogorgia there. be interesting to see how the community changes as we climb this feature. You ready for another move, then? Getting there. Did the ship stop? Yeah, we're going to have to do steps on this steep wall. We can't keep moving at that speed. Let's we stick into 0 0.1 knots then? No, we'll do just uh, 0 0.2, but we'll do steps of right. 20 meter steps. Yeah, let's try one, see what happens. Looks like a few small recruits of Bridge mushroom nav. coral there. 
Uh, 20 of? meters at zero to zero, please. Thank you. Yeah, I was not e able to keep ahead of uh, Atlanta at that speed on this steep hill. Wow. Katachi, when we do some moves, let's try to get the vehicles to the waypoint, uh, not necessarily the ship. So depending on the offset, you know. Sorry, can you repeat that, please? So when, when we're trying to get to these waypoints, we're trying to get the vehicles to the waypoints, not necessarily the ship itself to the waypoint. You know what I mean? Okay. Yep. I find it interesting, like this is like a graveyard of coral that all seem to be super thriving at some point. Mm -hmm. There must have been some kind of shift in its environment in the recent or not so recent past to have caused this. Right, yeah, it's very interesting. Major. Maybe we'll find a really fat star, a sea star. Bring your head to the right, if you can. Right so we're going to come up onto kind of a little plateau you could, here uh, you could come on this down, steep uh, slope. We're almost there, I think. And then we can look for a rock sample for Val, I think. The current definitely picked up. Well, it seemed that way with the Atalanta. Yeah. Can you uh, tilt up a bit? Yeah. Did you come down? Yeah, I did. Yeah, this is cool. This is like that little flat area in the middle of the slope. Dan, earlier, George asked if you tried the four-wheel drive mode. <laughs> I can four-wheel drive, but uh, it's way too beautiful to be going too fast. Very thicky-looking glass. If, if we do the steps, it gives me some time to veer off to sort of see like where the other species critters are in uh, Atlanta. So, Roger. If we're going fast, I, I just go straight. I can't. Sneak off and look at nice stuff like this. We're trying to frame up the That's DSC. That's cool for how we saw directly into the middle of that sponge there. Really see the bamboo pattern on this. Mm -hmm. Coral to the left. Sorry, which one are you looking at? Have there? you seen a bamboo that's here. fully alive? Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. there's quite a few, okay. um, which is interesting. I don't. Some seem fully able to thrive here. Any geological? Beautiful view of that bamboo coral. Skeleton. Yeah, there's yeah, there's two living ones right next to it, so it's kind of curious what happened here. Survival of the fittest, huh? <laughs> Is this kind of too many uh, dead corals to be predation? I think so, especially that we're not seeing many sea stars. Yeah, yeah. Could we get a look at the anemone on the dead coral on the just right of screen here? Yeah. Whoa. Perched Whoa. up there. Is that a, might be a fly trap anemone? Push in a little there if you want to. That's good, thanks. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Highlight. That is cool the way it's yeah. <laughs> totally like growing down the stalk, down the 
pull yeah. over a hinge. Oh, yeah. Wow. Looks like a Venus flytrap. Yeah, it, that's actually their common name, I think, this species. Bamboo skeleton. Mm. Interesting. How much longer on the last ship move, do we think? Uh, we just reached it. Okay. You want to try another? No, oh, not yet. <laughs> See where uh, Hercules is compared to Argus. Oh, yeah. The way the current is moving, if I'm looking at the sea snow, is different from what I feel like I'm observing from the direction that most of the coral are facing. Yeah, it might just be a matter of the moment we're in right now. Mm -hmm. So corals tend to face into the average direction of the current. Mm -hmm. current. We might just be seeing something different than the average right now. Can we take a look at the, this here to see the yellow stuff growing sure. on it? Zoom in a bit there, Jeff. Just at the end of my leash out here. Zoom in a bit more. I'll come down a few. That's good. Yeah, I oh, appreciate it. Like oh, thanks. Hydroid growing on there, maybe. Along with some ophiroids. Come down a bit more, Paul. Another part. That looks good, thank you. What do you think that was? Um, hydroid, probably, hydroid? growing. Not yet, no. Copy that. I'm off, <coughs> I'm off to the west, I need to. We're headed uh, mm. off to the north, northeast. North by northeast. When a coral dies, how long will the skeleton stay standing? very long time, I think, unless the current knocks it over. Um, I think it'll stay standing unless something pushes it over long enough, right? Right, yeah, the rate of dissolution, um, it depends on what the pH is like in the water, but mm -hmm. um, typically um, so okay. here Good it wouldn't another be going to really okay. dissolve it very quickly at all. Bridge, this is Nev. Can you come down uh, by Paul? Can we go to another 20 meters uh, in heading 020? Thank you. I, I'd like to actually go perp perpendicular to the contour lines. Okay. Up the slope. Okay, we can. Or even towards uh, the next waypoint, honestly. Okay. Bridge, can we do 20 meters north, please? Instead of it. So is the vehicle pretty much at waypoint two right now? Looks like it. Yes. Come down, Paul. All right, let's look for a rock if you have uh, time. You think you have time? Yep. We're doing these 20 meter step moves, so we got as much time as you need for sampling. Okay. Cantaloupe size, angular, and sort Down of dislodged from this little ridge, if we can. Coming down. Yeah. Any that you see? Um, maybe back back here we'll have better luck. Yeah, 
look for a place to land without yeah. massive collateral damage. Yeah, here's here's some good candidates over here, probably. I'll come down a little more. Yep, keep coming down. I came down the hill quite a bit, so uh, we went off to the east there when the ship stopped. Get your uh, manipulator ready. Yep. I'm gonna steal bubble. Yep. Maybe something over here. Roger. It's kind of rubble to our right and uh, native yeah. to our left. Yeah. Uh, be in here somewhere or you want to move into the rubble yeah i'm trying to look at the lasers like you th these look pretty big so you might have better luck yeah. sorry i'm just chasing argus to the east there it's yeah if you need to get back underneath it a little more that's fine i do yeah and have him drop down i think that just 20 meters east just like that <laughs> yeah do you want to move then or are you good uh we uh we weren't moving we we're just completed the move oh yeah still looking for cantaloupe sized rocks here You want to pick one, Malana? I feel like um, just like just to the center or yep, a little bit to the correct. left, right there. It's all, it looks almost a little bit behind that. These? And a little bit more towards you, but there, practically there. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. We want to go for that one, give it a poke. the lasers go they're hiding by the by the sea and enemy I feel like <laughs> it looks it's right about there wait are we going for that one? Oh, uh, any of these honestly mm -hmm. uh, all right Dan which uh, can we circle one just like a target yeah uh, this might be good to set down around here couple 
meters, yeah. Yeah, if you can dislodge something uh, from this little outcrop, that would work. Outcrop. But there might be something loose, too. Maybe try up there. That one's not that great. It looks very eroded. Oh, it's that one's lodged in there too, huh? Hmm. I wonder if where the ROV is currently sitting, right where you're sitting. I wonder if there are any ones. Maybe try this one while we're parked here. Mm -hmm. Can we get a little bit more light on that? Oh yeah. No. Let there be light. Got to get that close-up view of Paul's face again. Yeah. No, we're going to be nice. Wow. They look like they'd be loose, but they're not, are they? Could try another area. It's fine. Sorry, Coral. Well, hi. The sacrificial corals. It was going to die anyway. <laughs> Kick your porch lights off again. Are any of these uh, promising for the type yeah. of science we want? I think so, because... Oh. That's too big, I, th I think. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> too much bonk. We both were moving. That one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be loose. Yeah. You want this one? Winner. Sure. Looks ding, pretty good. Ding, 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 ding. Winner. So this do would be for Val and the starboard. All right. Uh, do we want to zoom in a little bit? Yes, please. And you want the lasers on it, right? Yes. Can we zoom out just a touch? Thank you. That's a beautiful looking rock. Nice yeah. looking rock. It's almost perfectly cantaloupe shaped. <laughs> Beautiful cantaloupe shaped rock. Is that uh, good on the video? Yep, you're good. Awesome. Uh, where's this one going? Um, so you've already got Bridge, the, uh, this is Nev. Go ahead and put it in star bio box. Can we e? get 20 meters at uh, bearing 335, please?
Which uh, which box are we going? Uh, starboard box E. E, got it. Do we want to save one of those big ones? Save one of those big ones. So um, E and F are bigger, so do we want okay, to Okay, go ahead and put in A then, sorry. Copy that. All good. Oh, let's see. How do you reach A? Oh, yeah. All right, it is an A. Bingo. Nice zoom of a brittle star there. We don't need a uh, water with this. No, yeah, because it's for Val. Raj. Looks like it's got the tip of one of its arms got nipped off by something. That looks like a young uh, bamboo coral right there. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, please. Yep. Mm -hmm. Coming to say hi. Hello. I uh, just wanted to cheat and see my joints before I... Yeah. A zoom on this big fan here. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to get a look at the base too, if we could. Really a beautiful looking coral. <laughs> get the real close up here. You've uh, got one on the front porch uh, too. See the bamboo banding here. Some happy polyps. Honey. Oh. Beauty. Crikey, mate. That's a real beautiful coral you're looking at there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great shot. Great accent, too. You can actually see the little sclerites in each polyp, the little white elements. That's actually, um, although these are octocorals or soft corals, they have hard skeletal elements called sclerites in their, embedded in their tissue. And that's often what you use to diagnose them at the species level. And here you can actually see them. That's how good close up we got to zoom. Very cool. Thank you. This was a bamboo coral? Yes. And I s totally saw the notches in, in it. Very cool. What's that Z star again? That's a brittle uh, star. Brittle star. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, 20 more meters at bearing 335, please. Thank you. <laughs> I know I have to ration the chocolate throughout the dive. 
was that? <laughs> I'm sorry, did you Nothing. not get a memo about no eating in the van? You didn't hear anything? <laughs> what? No, we thought we were muted. <laughs> did I explain the video candy tax? <laughs> Should get Haribo to sponsor us. <laughs> Agreed. Don't they make those Swedish fish or something? It's like somewhat relevant. Can we take a look at something swimming down here? Eel, maybe? Yeah, it looks like a Sanafabranket eel, maybe? The same meal we just saw, like, yesterday, yeah? I believe so. This one looks smaller. What was the name of this one? That's great. Thank you. Sanafra Branket. Sanafra Bran Branket. Yeah. I'm forgetting their common name. There definitely is some uh, control glitch, though, where the um, auto heading runs away with it. But resetting it seems to just fix that. Can we get a snap zoom on this, too? Looks like black coral. branching happening on the left side of it there. Wow. Black coral or... Does it usually extend like that? I don't think so. It looks pretty... Bathy pathy? My, my guess is bathy pathies, yeah. You can see some exposed skeleton there. That's why they got their name black coral. Tissue is often pretty brightly colored and beautiful, but they have a protonaceous skeleton that's typically dark brown or black. Another beautiful close-up. Yeah, really nice. This is apparently telopathies, not bathypathies, so a different black coral. Telopathies. Thank you. Thank you to our scientists ashore. Can we get a view on the secondary branching on the site? Telopathies. Yeah, that's interesting. Alrighty. Brian, do they feed differently than the bamboo corals? Uh, no, they're filter f or. Uh, suspension feeders as well. <coughs> Does the color of what we see down here ever change when um, we get a sample back up on the ship? Like between mm. seeing them in water and then seeing them in air? after a little bit of time? Um, that's a good question. Not typically. Um, sometimes, a lot of times when you place them in ethanol, they will lose their pigment. Mm. But uh, until then, we they typically say the same. We cheat. That's why we buy a white balance. Did you say uh, tilt down or come down?
Ready for another move? Nope. You wanna ask Dwight? Yeah, so I'm one of our broad. scientists ashore actually asked if we could sample that black coral. Because is it possible to go back that way? Hold, hold off on the ship move. So some scientists are looking at whether bathypathies and telopathies, two, ge two genera of black yeah, coral, on it. are actually able to hybridize. So maybe this specimen would be um, useful in answering that question. Very cool. When you say hybridize, do you mean like come together and then like... Reproduce together, yeah. Wow. Cool. While we're transiting back. Oh, we're here. Yeah, it was that guy, wasn't it? Beautiful. I think it was this one. Yeah, because you can see the, the black exposed part of the skeleton. So we only need one branch of this, really, because we're... They're interested in getting some DNA out of it. Is there a uh, section of it that we're going for in particular? I don't think so, as long as we get some tissue. So maybe one of the lower branches that seem to not have as much exposed skeleton. Copy that. Um, and is this a snip or a slurp? Probably a snip. I would, I would say probably a snip. Would you recommend coming in with the cutters just like this? Is that do, you guys, do you guys uh, want a whole bunch of branches or just one? Just one branch would be all right. Was that secondary branch not good enough? Any branch is fine. Oh, okay. Just asking since it was already sticking out. Mm -hmm. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay. You're doing a great job. Oh. Come on, little Koa. You can do it. There you go. Nice. Beautiful. Verify that we've got our... Oh. Did we actually... Is it in there? Get any, though? Perhaps did it fall? 
or maybe I don't see any yeah maybe try again yeah There, the secondary branch. Oh. Yeah, there it is. It's in there. Oh yeah, I see it. Is slurp okay? Uh, sorry, I wasn't on this. Are you guys happy to put that in the sample jar? We can do the snip and slurp. Yeah, that's good, thank you. Roger. I think you've got both, yeah. You wanna go wide for him, Jeff? Oh look. We have a little fishy. Oh yeah. You've seen this technique before, have you, Paul? Yeah. Uh, stand by, let me switch jars here. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Who, who is this fish we have? Uh, wrong way. Okay. Pilots, after the sample, could we get a of the other side of the coral if possible sure. so see how you're like you're pitched all the way up and you're on left yeah you have to straighten those two joints out and if anything pitch back towards yourself a little bit yeah something like that might get it and then remember you have to bring the elbow or the shoulder down Push in a bit there. That's good. So you actually want to, you'll see the vacuum start getting it. And um, parallax air is probably killing you. You can see in bubble where you need to go. Did I get caught up in the arm again? No. Nope. Uh, pitch down. You're pitched all the way up. Look at bubble. If you just spin around three times and Close your eyes and scratch your left armpit with your left arm. You'll get an idea of what Paul is trying to do here. I think I'm hitting the uh, front you are. rail. Is there a way to deal with that? Yeah. Kick the uh, yaw joint a little more sideways. for a second. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to hand me in a minute. I can't yeah, yeah. stand in there. Hold on. sideways and the pitch down and I roll the wrist. So I'll get 
where I want to be while I'm still out um, far away from it. Ready for suction? Uh, suction is on. T2? Oops. Uh, yeah, it's already on. Oh, yeah. Now I'm doing the same thing you were. <laughs> That's what we wanted. You're sure it's a T6? That's a suction, right? Correct. Okay, uh, you know, I might as well open while I'm here. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. I think we were also hitting the, the rocks there. Oh, so. yeah. So we've also got this coral on our porch. Are we able to throw that in the starboard bio box? Sure. Fiona, do you have a empty spot there? Uh, do you know where it came from? I think we knocked it uh, last rock sample, approximately. Got a request from it from the scientist ashore. Go ahead and put it in starboard box B. Starboard box C, rather. B. B for Bravo. B for ball. Bravo, yes. <laughs> or beta. No. Uh, to roll your dogs a little, I think. Yeah. Oh. You want me to do that? It's going to be a difficult armpit grab. Uh, yeah, sure. It won't be pretty because I'll have to smear the porch. Got a nice shot of this cutthroat eel in front of the vehicle. What's the name? Yeah, have a good throat opportunity throat? for uh, my nip cam. <laughs> or maybe put that actually. on the big screen, Jeff. I think that's a rat tail, actually. I can't see it well. The hard part about this is that I call it drunken bubble because it's like upside down. It's not a regular. Like we're looking backwards. Uh, were you on grip force three there? Yeah, I was. You want to keep it on three? Yeah. It's likely I'm going to mangle this thing when I try and grab it off the porch here. When do you think we collected this? I think I saw it come down onto the porch at um, the time the of the last rock sample. Oh, okay. was the rock sample? That was one of um, Val's rocks that we were collecting. <laughs> 